It's 300 wins. It's Shula, yeah. it's Hallis, and it's Belichick. He's the best of all time, and mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it. And to me, it's, it's the little things. It's the consistency. Every week is a completely different game plan. You know, so it's like he's there every week. And for 300 wins, I mean, this is, look, I don't care if he doesn't win another game. He's still the greatest coach of all time. And, and you knew as, as a coach going up against him, you better darn well be at your very best or you were going to get embarrassed like the Browns did yesterday. And Pat, I want you to make the point that you did in our meeting this morning that I think is interesting. To be doing it over this period of time with the way people have changed and yeah. players have changed. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't think about the humans that are players. I mean, this millennial generation is much different than it was back in the day. And Belichick has not only been able to adapt his game plans week in and week out, but his coaching styles to reach different generations of players. you got Tom Brady, who is the living legend, the greatest of all time. Then you got young guys like Dorsett going in there. Very different. And coach Coaching is bringing the best out of people, and his ability to do that with different generations for two decades now of greatness in New England is something that should be noted and talked about because it's not easy to do. All right, so we have that side of him. Patriots win. They're unbeaten. Their defense has almost outscored the points that they've allowed all season, so they're remarkable. Everything that falls on the coaching desk, I mean, head coach, everything runs from the top down. They are the most penalized team in documented history of the NFL. I mean, that is just yep. a, a factual statement. So not only did they come off the bye week, three turnovers in the first quarter against a team you can't turn over the ball against, not only are they still the most penalized team, then they have the, if we're going to pick up 11, we can pick up 16 debacle at the end. It seems like things, now well, this might be a little cliche, might be getting a little hot in the kitchens uh, for <laughs> Freddie Kitchens, especially with the underperformance of this team. They're like the Titanic. Everybody thought they are unsinkable. They've crashed into every single iceberg you could potentially find. And if they're going to let Freddie Kitchens play the music all the way down to the bottom of the ocean while Jack and Rose are floating on that damn board, that's a bad decision for the dog. <laughs> I'll never let go. I mean, Coach, but in particular, when she you, did let when go. You, she did, in fact, let go. She yeah. lied. Um, but with the talent that he has on that roster, I understand games yeah. that won on paper, but when you look from top to bottom they're a very talented team and they're two and five yeah you would kill for this talent and it's so funny how we make excuses for them you know first week hey that's just the first week all these penalties mm -hmm. well it hadn't gotten better and then you're sitting back going uh you know every every week it's something else that happens well as a coach guess what I would kill for this talent. Any coach in the league would kill for this talent you might be the most talented team you know, in the National Football League, and you're two and five. So who's going to get the, uh, you know, who's going down? I promise you he's going down. Because uh, they're not going to fire the players. They're going to fire the coach. Here's the only thing I'll tell you guys. Bingo. This is the schedule coming up here. Ooh. There's some winnable games on that schedule. The Browns in a division that has not fully run away from them yet are not dead. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.